Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with the Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about overspeed and underspeed training for sprinting. You may have seen athletes sprinting with resistance in the form of maybe a band around the hips or a parachute or even pulling a sled weight and that would generally be considered underspeed training. You may have also seen athletes doing assisted sprinting where they have a band that's pulling them forward or sprinting down a slight incline and that would be generally considered overspeed training. So we're gonna talk about the science behind these techniques and figure out what is effective for improving sprint speed. So if your goal is to overall improve sprint speed, we can generally use the techniques of overspeed and underspeed training in what's called bracketing. So the bracketing technique is basically when we modify the load of the movement by about 10% in one direction or another to slightly change the load characteristics without drastically changing the motor pattern. So in the case of sprinting, what this means is that we can slow the athlete down with a band or a parachute or a slightly uphill sprint by about 10% off of their max velocity sprinting. What this does is it introduces more load than what they're used to with just sprinting at body weight. This can slightly change the dynamics of the sprint and they might have a slight difference in their stride length, in their stride rate, in their force production, and their ground contact times. The slightly higher load from the added resistance will not significantly change the muscular synchronization pathways associated with max velocity sprinting, but it will slightly increase the demand for push off and for vertical force production and for a powerful sprint. So by using this technique that adds resistance and decreases our speed by about 10%, we can improve certain aspects of the sprint and allow our athletes to improve strength and sprint speed without significantly impairing their mechanics. Overall, the research on this is pretty clear that we don't wanna significantly change the athlete's mechanics by adding too much load. So if we're adding, for example, a very heavy sled that the athlete's pulling, we're gonna significantly change the body angle, we're gonna significantly change the joint angles that this athlete's working at, and it's not gonna be specific to improving their max velocity speed. However, if we add just enough resistance through a light band or a parachute or a sled pull that's not too heavy, we can improve their strength with good carryover to performance. On the other side of the bracketing technique, we have overspeed training. And this would be something like a slightly downhill sprint where the athlete's gonna move a little bit faster than they would on a level ground or a band assisted sprint where another athlete is pulling them forward and assisting them to go faster. This can be done over ground on a track or on a field, or it can be done in a treadmill setting. There's good evidence that this technique can be effective in improving max velocity sprint mechanics as well for a different reason. The athlete in this case is being pulled or towed to go faster than they're used to. So they're working on faster foot turnover and faster recruitment of high threshold motor units. Overall, we still wanna abide by the same principle of not drastically changing their mechanics. So we don't wanna pull them so much that they're overstriding or that they're starting to compensate in one way or another, but we do wanna add speed enough that they're starting to turn their feet over faster and improving some of the mechanics of the sprint. And generally, the rule of thumb here is about 10% for overspeed training, so we don't really wanna go beyond 10% above their max velocity already. This bracketing technique is not specific to sprinting. You could also use it for the vertical jump or for a shot put athlete or for pull-ups. For example, if we wanna apply this to an athlete who's doing the vertical jump, we can have them add about 10% of their body weight holding dumbbells and doing jumps training that way. And then they could also train with assisted jump squats where they're doing a band assist and actually decreasing their body weight and doing jumps. And by training with both of these, we're gonna improve the middle of where that bracket is and they'll be able to jump higher with just their body weight. The way this would apply to shot put is if a college athlete is competing with a 16 pound shot put, what we could have them do is put a shot that's 18 or 14 pounds. And that slight change in the weight will actually improve different aspects of their technique. And one question you might have is, what about heavy exercises though? So what about training trap bar deadlifts or very heavy sled pushes for our sprinters? And those could be effective as well, but it's a different set of adaptations than what you get from sprinting. Whenever you're pushing a heavy sled, it's very different biomechanics and it's more on the force side of things than it is on the velocity side of things. So by doing these heavier exercises, you may improve different things like maximal force production, muscle size, time to fatigue, stride length, or horizontal force production in the acceleration phase of sprinting. 
these are all great things to train and there's definitely a time and a place for heavy training in sprinting. It's just important to understand that those are different adaptations than what we get with the bracketing technique around max velocity. So overall, it's not that overspeed or underspeed training is more effective. If we keep it within about 10% of body weight for sprinters, we're gonna see pretty similar effects on either side of that. I would probably tend towards adding a little bit more underspeed training than overspeed training because of the ease of performing it, as well as the fact that those adaptations tend to last a little bit longer than the very neuromuscular specific adaptations associated with overspeed training but they both do have a time and a place in sport training. And a good strength conditioning coach will allocate volume to heavy training, to overspeed training, to underspeed training appropriately throughout the season. If you guys do have any questions about this type of training, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. You could also join the strength conditioning study group on Facebook, which will be particularly beneficial if you are studying for the CSCS exam. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.